scientists have been able to make matter from light. This is a far cry from the replicators of the Star Trek universe. But it's still an incredibly interesting breakthrough. They also showed that magnetic fields can change the speed of light depending on the polarization of the light and actually bend the light differently, even in vacuum. So how did they achieve these amazing results and create matter? Let's discuss it. To generate matter from light, we need to have two photons interact to produce a matter-antimatter pair, which is called the Bright-Wheeler process and is what was achieved in this latest work. Now, if you have learned some particle physics, you may think, wait on a second, photons don't interact with each other. So how is this even possible? Well, you're right. Photons quite famously don't interact with each other. Otherwise, we would have to worry about photon-photon scattering all of the time. To be more precise though, photons don't directly interact with each other. What happens here is when photons have a high enough energy, they can generate a virtual particle, say a virtual electron. This virtual particle can then mediate the interaction between the two photons. Now, a virtual particle is a particle that resembles a real particle, but whose existence is limited by the uncertainty principle. This type of particle is commonly used to explain how particles can interact in particle physics. So, in order to make matter, we just need to generate high energy photons, bring them close enough so that they can interact, remove the antimatter that is also made in this process, and there you go, you have yourself an electron. Now just repeat this a couple of trillion trillion times to make that Earl Grey tea. A little tricky. One way to try and produce the Brett Wheeler interaction is to use extremely high powered lasers. However, so far this hasn't proven to be an effective method, partially due to the difficulty in making lasers with a high enough energy. An alternative method is to use heavy ions, which produce high energy photons, which is exactly what was performed in this latest experiment. Here the scientists took gold particles that were stripped of their electrons and then accelerated them to near the speed of light. These heavy ions contained 79 uncompensated protons, which produces a powerful electric field from this charge. When moving, this electric field becomes a strong magnetic field in a similar way to a current traveling in a wire. At speeds near the speed of light, the magnetic and electric field produced by the moving charge are deformed from the lab frame, which is referred to as Lorentz boosted. As one scientist said, if the speed is high enough, the strength of the circular magnetic field can be equal to the strength of the perpendicular electric field. This is what a photon is. So when the ions are moving close to the speed of light, there are a bunch of photons surrounding the gold nucleus traveling with it like a cloud. In theory, this can produce a magnetic field in the order of 10 to the 14 to 10 to the 16 Tesla. This is a monstrously large magnetic field. For comparison, the highest continuous magnetic fields that we can produce is around 45 Tesla. Just a couple of orders of magnitude difference. We can go higher with pulse techniques, but sometimes the machines literally rip themselves apart by doing so and still the magnetic fields produced are tiny in comparison to the moving heavy ion. In fact, the magnetic field that is produced by these heavy ions is so large that the scientists were able to observe what is called vacuum by refringence. This means that light with different polarization directions has a different speed of light in the vacuum. The speed of light is given by C equals one on the square root of epsilon naught and mu naught these are the vacuum permittivity and permeability. And in general, we assume that these constants are in fact that, constant. Well, it turns out that the refractive index of the vacuum actually depends on the magnetic field, and thus these values change. In fact, there is a difference in the refractive index that depends on the polarization of the light relative to the magnetic field. This difference originates from vacuum fluctuations, where virtual electron-positron pairs can be spontaneously created, then annihilated. 
Normally, the polarization dependent term is ignored as it's suppressed by an incredibly small prefactor. However, the magnetic fields are now monstrously large, and as such, this factor can no longer be ignored. Thus, light no longer has a unique speed, and the speed depends on the polarization of the light. By carefully measuring the position of the electron and positrons produced in these Brett-Rillet interactions as a function of the light polarization, one can detect if the vacuum biofringence has occurred. Here the scientists measured this difference as an oscillation in their measurements, which agrees with the predicted oscillation for this effect. The scientists said, when we look at the products produced by the photon-photon interactions, we see that the angular distribution of the products depends on the angle of the polarization of the light. This indicates that the absorption or passing of light depends on its polarization. That is, that the magnetic field has introduced a polarization dependent refractive index. Now back to making matter. This large confined magnetic and electric fields results in high energy photons in the wake of the moving ion. One scientist described it as, we have two clouds of photons moving in opposite directions with enough energy and intensity that when the two ions graze past each other without colliding, the photon fields can interact. And the idea is to have these photons interact to produce the brett wheel interaction. So two heavy ions are accelerated in opposite directions and made to pass each other with a small gap. By doing this procedure, the scientists were able to get evidence that they did indeed produce electron-positron pairs from photon interactions and they could easily detect the difference from when the ions themselves would interact. As the scientists said, our results provide clear evidence of direct one-step creation of matter-antimatter pairs from collisions of light as originally predicted by Brett and Wheeler, thanks to the RHIC's high energy ion beam and the star detector's acceptance and precision measurements, we are able to analyze all of the kinematic distributions with high statistics to determine that the experimental results are indeed consistent with real photon collisions. That is, they are able to look at the byproducts of this interaction with great detail to narrow it down to confirm that this was in fact a Brett Wheeler interaction. While we're not producing T from light yet, this accomplishment is an important step to completing our understanding of the standard model of particle physics. It will be very exciting to see what new research spawns from these results. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you next time.